Good afternoon, and thank you for inviting me to speak at the dedication ceremony for Coast Guard 41410. As a bit of gratitude towards this remarkable type of rescue boat, I'd like to share some of the impacts 41 footers have had on my life. My first encounter with the Coast Guard 41 was in 1978 at the age of 13. My father just purchased a used 17 foot boat and secured a slip at a marina on the north side of Lake St. Clair. Prior to leaving the dock, Dad checked the fuel gauge, which read half a tank, made sure we had three life jackets on board, and my father, older brother, and I set off. About halfway into our voyage, the weather began to change with high winds, driving rain, and nightfall rapidly approaching. We were several miles offshore when one of our engines suddenly stopped. Dad checked the fuel gauge, and although we had been out for quite some time, the gauge still read half a tank. After some further troubleshooting, he determined that we were out of fuel. As we drifted, waves started coming over the gunnel, and the weather worsened. Dad looked around the boat, and fuel was not the only thing the previous owner left us short of. We also did not have any flares, a marine radio, anchor, or paddles. As a last resort, my dad removed the board from the fuel tank covers to use as makeshift paddles, and he and my brother Scott paddled the boat while I steered in the direction of shore. It was pitch black out, and the weather was continuing to worse, get worse. As a Cub Scout, one of the things we were taught was SOS. So over and over again, with the navigation lights, I flashed SOS in hopes that someone from shore would see that we are in distress. To our surprise, in what seemed like an eternity, we saw a flashing blue light floodlights from a boat as it headed towards us. As it got close, we could see that it was a 41-footer from Station St. Clair Shores. Once alongside, they told us someone from shore had seen our flashing lights and called in our distress. They checked to make sure we were okay, and Dad told them what had happened. The Coast Guard crew gave us some fuel and followed us to the marina. My next experience with the 41 was at the age of 17 when I enlisted in the Coast Guard Reserves. My first assignment was stationed St. Clair Shores, and as a young fireman boat engineer, I became intimately familiar with every nook and cranny of the villages of 41449. In 1983, I graduated high school and attended Machine Technician A School. I then transitioned into active duty, and my first assignment was stationed Kenosha. Our boathouse for 41376 consisted of a stationed parking lot with no creature comforts like heat. Throughout the winter, we would work in shifts to ready the boat for spring. Kenosha Harbor was renowned for salmon fishing, and hundreds of fishermen would line the piers. I remember many of them being a bit upset and gesturing to us in a friendly fashion as they lost their fishing poles and gears to 41376 as we raced out of the beer heads in re response to the call. After a tour on board the Mackinac, the original Mackinac, I was transferred to Station Milwaukee as the engineering petty officer. 41433 was station's primary boat, and 41410 was assigned as the group Milwaukee Spare. 41410 was setting high and dry in the buoy yard and was out of service. She had been cannibalized for parts in order to keep the other 41s in the group going, and it was in need of a proud owner. With that said, and although Station Milwaukee was only staffed to maintain 141, an agreement was made that Station Milwaukee's crew would get 410 back in service. As with any arrangement, this one came at a cost, and the cost was that the group yeoman and storekeepers had to assume yard maintenance duties for the base. As you can imagine, this deal was not one that the admin staff was either eager to take. After countless hours of work, 41410 was returned to the water and placed in a B0 status. It was once again being used throughout Lake Michigan when other boats were taken out of service. In 1992, a tunnel collapsed under the Chicago River, and downtown Chicago began flooding. 41410 was deployed to the Chicago River and remained on scene with crews manning her around the clock until repairs were made. When the plane cr crashed in Milwaukee Harbor, 41410, along with two auxiliary vessels, answered the call and rescued four people. My relationship with the 41 continued when I uh, was assigned back to Station St. Clair Shorts after a tour on the Cutter Confidence. I served as engineering petty officer and I once again was working on a 41449. 41449 was my first 41 that my daughter Kylie took the helm of during Bring Your Daughter to Work Day. In 2009, Kylie joined the Coast Guard and I remember excitement in her voice when she called and told me she had received orders to station, station Milwaukee as a fireman. Kylie obtained qualification as crewman and boat engineer on board 41410. 
One evening, Kylie called and said, Dad, I found your entries in the vote record for 410. She said it made her proud to know she was working on the same boat that I had worked on. Kylie is currently serving as a, in the Coast Guard Reserves as an MK, uh, MK3 at Station Fairport, Ohio, and her younger brother, Camden, is an MK3 on the Cutter Bear. Clearly, the 41 has a pr proven track record and has earned its place in Coast Guard history. They were simple vessels that stood to watch over the, o for over 40 years. In closing, 41s have kept three generations of my family safe and it has truly been an honor to have served on board them.